It's much cooler in here than it is out in the other uh, arena. Yeah, they got a gate on here. This can't be right. Uh, I think the gate was 16.76 million. Attendance was 20,062. Um, Tai Tuavasa and Duplessis uh, got got the performance of the night, and then uh, fight of the night was the O'Malley fight. Had I had I, you know, a kid comes in on short notice, wouldn't go away, trying to win. Fought his ass off, and he deserves. And, and bonuses were seventy-five thousand dollars. So, congratulations to all of them. Yeah, no doubt. Dana, got to get your thoughts on the main event, right? A great fight while it lasted, and then kind of a bizarre ending. So, talk about your you know immediate reaction to that. Yeah, you know these you know second leg break, and and and, and uh, you know what the last uh, three fights or something. It sucks. It's brutal. It's it's uh, you know it's not the way you want to see fights end. So you know. Dustin Poirier will fight for the title, and, and Connor's healed and ready to go. You, you do the rematch, I guess. I don't know. Did you? I mean, obviously, it appeared a pretty clear leg break. Do we have like official medical confirmation? He'll go. He goes into surgery in the morning. Okay. Yeah. Did you get a chance to speak to him at all before he was transported? Just when I was standing in, in the octagon. Yeah. You you said it right there. You said do the rematch, right? He said he thinks the rivalry isn't over. Do you do you feel that way that the rivalry isn't over? And needs yeah. To happen? Uh, yeah. Listen, that, that the fight didn't get finished you know uh, 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 you can't have a fight finished that way so you know we'll see, we'll see how this whole thing plays out who knows how long connor's out so you know um uh, poor will do his thing until until connor's ready yeah you said it i mean obviously that's the fight to make the title fight did you speak to charles or dustin like any idea like how soon they'd like to fight no no uh, did want to ask you about Gilbert Burns as well in, in the co-main event. Obviously, not the most exciting fight, but a, but a big result against a top contender. What did, what did you think of his performance? Yeah, um, he won. Uh, I mean, what, what else is there to say about the fight? It wasn't a good fight, um, but he won. Yeah. He had three call-outs. He said Mazidal, Leon Edwards, Nate Diaz. You know, you got all those guys at the top knowing that we're waiting on the title fight. Do any of those matchups stand out to you as one that makes sense for him? Yeah, I mean, I mean obviously... Uh, Edwards and Masvidal make more sense than Nate does, um, but I don't know. Right here, right now, it's the last thing I'm thinking about. Yeah. And I did want to ask you about Sean O'Malley. I mean, he got a huge pop in there tonight. As you said, I don't think he did anything wrong in there. The other guy was just incredibly tough. So what did you think about him and kind of where he, he stands? He seems like just becoming a massive star. Yeah, listen, he, he did what he was supposed to do. He, you know, he stayed on his feet, kept moving, hit the guy with tons of combinations. Uh, didn't gas out while doing it. I mean, he was looking at the clock a little bit there in the, in the fight. But, uh, you know, when you're in there against a zombie, I, I, I could just imagine, you know, what, what it's like. So uh, I, I thought he put on a good performance. Yeah. Last thing for me, I just meant to ask you earlier. Uh, I know you say this is the fight business. People are going to say mean things. But did you have any disappointment in Connor? you know, still chirping at Dustin while he's sitting on the ground? At oh, the I, didn't, I didn't hear it. I, I didn't hear one word of it. I, he brought his wife back into things. Ah, yeah, and, I don't like that. Yeah, yeah that's not good. Yeah, leave people's family and wives and you know all that stuff out of it. The family has nothing to do with it. Dana, to your left. What do you make? You know, Con one of the things Connor said at the press conference the other day was he doesn't count submissions. That you know he's 19 and one, right? Or, or you know whatever his record will be without submission losses. So here he's out there going for guillotines. Like so, the fact that yeah. guys says he doesn't count it. Why was he going for a guillotine? Listen, you say a lot of things at press conferences and when you're in a fight. Guillotine's a part of the sport, so if it's there, you take it. And it was actually a very risky move for him to take that. If it, I think if you're going to take it, you keep it standing and try to do it standing instead of going to the ground. But, you know, you're in the heat of the moment. and You probably had a good view of that across the octagon. Did you think Connor was, you know, was badly hurt when the round ended? Forgetting the ankle, uh, you know, just from the punches that Dustin was landed, he landed a lot of big shots from the top, and then the uh, the left hand that knocked him down. Did you think Connor was in bad shape just from, you know, being buzzed? I think he got, you know, he definitely was on the receiving end of some elbows and some punches, but that's part of the game. I mean, everybody takes that. No, I guess and, what I'm saying is, do you think like, you know, that would have been a situation where you might have seen Dustin finish it if Connor hadn't gotten injured like that? You see what I'm saying? Well, he got back up on his feet and was throwing punches. I mean, his ankle snapped from throwing punches. 
um, you know, he, he was fighting back. It wasn't like he was up against the cage and defenseless and and Dustin was on low, a low Dustin, la Dustin landed a punch that knocked him down, and that's why his leg collapsed back on. Dustin landed a left hand that knocked Connor back, and his leg, and when he got I, I don't, I, listen, I don't know. Only Connor knows that the answer to that question, but I, I, if that, if his ankle doesn't break, I think we get to the end of the round and go to round. What, what do you make of Dustin's performance? I mean, you know, he had, uh, you know, he took a couple shots early, and you know, it, he shows a lot of resilience as a fighter, right? I mean, is that is that what you make of it? Yeah, the, the shitty part for Dustin is that he gets out of the guillotine, he he's got the top position, lands great elbows, punches, uh, you, you know, uh, en ends up uh, winning the round, and then uh, Connor breaks his ankle and have so. The, the, so the storyline is, oh, Con Connor broke his ankle instead of, you know, Dustin looked good. Last thing, you know, do you think that uh, a Poirier from, let's say, 2016 or 2015 after the Connor loss would have been able to do this, right? I mean, you know, it seems like the, the passage of time and the experience he's gained has made a big difference in him being able to weather that storm that Connor put on him and then still come back and, and put on a good performance and uh, win the fight. Um, I mean, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, the Dustin from then knocked out in the first round. So this Dustin took some big shots and 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 uh, you know was able to t uh, get out of the guillotine and 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 uh, turn that guillotine into an advantage for him. Lastly, just what what is the key to that? Like, is it, from your standpoint, is it just experience and having been in those situations? You think that fighters learn that? Yeah, well, what I think it is for somebody like Dustin is, you know, this guy's at the American top team and he's training with savages every day. That, that's the key to everything. I mean, even in boxing, you, you, you have to have the best guys in the world around you, you know, um, going at it with you every day. Dana, right here. Yeah. Right here. Uh, what, did you agree with the stoppage in the O'Malley Moutinho fight? Moutinho was very upset when Herb Dean stopped it with 30 seconds left. I think it could have been stopped three minutes before that he could have stopped it in the second round he could have that fight could have and should have been stopped at any moment i had no problem with that stoppage and then what did you make of tai tuivasa's knockout over greg hardy it kind of looked like it was chaos in there for a bit until he landed a big bomb and now he's doing shoeies with everyone in the uh, arena it looks like he could be a big star too uh, moving forward in that division he's a fun heavyweight he's a fun guy to watch and uh you know he's a fun guy in the octagon and out of the octagon and then finally, uh, Ilya Tapora, finally, he, he was the first one to stop Ryan Hall inside the octagon, even though, what did you make of Ryan Hall doing his, like, his roles in there, and then Ilya Tapora just walking away and then diving in and finishing him? Listen, everything that that kid's done before this has worked, you know? Tonight it didn't. Hey, Dana. Yep. Right over here. Hey. Hypothetically speaking, if Dustin beats Oliver and becomes the champion, would you want Connor to fight him for a title shot, or would you want him to fight someone else to earn the title shot? You know, and all that stuff, it's, it, you can't do the hypotheticals in this sport. It's all about timing and, and what's going on, what has happened since then. You know, we, 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 we got to see how this whole thing plays out. Don't even know how Connor goes into surgery tomorrow. I don't know how long he's going to be out, how much rehab or therapy he's going to need, and, you know. And lastly, tied to Ivasa, when he gets the victory, he does the shoeys. The crowd loves it. Do you think we can make that a tradition? If he gets the victory, he does a shoey on the cage. Make it a tradition? Tradition. Like, I don't know. I mean, that's up to him. I, I, he's been doing it since he won, hasn't he? I mean, I mean, since he's been here. He goes out and does a, do, does a shoey with, with everybody ever since he got here, right? I'm Sounds like it's already a tradition. All right. Yeah. Dana, to you, right? right here. Hey. Uh, do you have any update on how many stitches Jessica I got in the forehead there? That's a good question. Well, Ben. 13? 13 stitches. What Dana, you, over here to your right. Uh, oh, what, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. What do you think about that, that fight, though, when they cut, though? That was a nastier one that we got there. Yeah, the, no, that was, that was a beauty, man. She's tough. She's tough as nails. Um, there, there's a logical thing that happens to you when you get split wide open like that and blood is running all over your face into your eyes, and, you know, you can see it on the camera, but and especially for a woman, and, and she's, uh, she's tough, man. She, she's, uh, she's a gamer. And then as for uh, the other women who, woman who won on the card, uh, Irene Aldana, what did you think of her? I, I, I thought she looked incredible tonight. I thought she looked incredible tonight. Um, I didn't say, is this thing, what am I doing wrong? Holding it wrong? Yeah. Just like that. I, 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 uh, 
I didn't see the fight ending like that. I, and I thought that was going to be a much tougher fight. She made it look easy. She didn't have a mark on her face. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> This mic sucks. It's not me. <laughs> there you go. It's been like that all night. All right. Dana, over here to is, your right. Is it, is it kind of exciting for you to have this emergence of Mexican stars, though? That you, I mean, I'll, she's been yeah. around for a while, but, you know, yeah, she's yeah. continuing to look great. No, she continues to get better in, in, in every moment. And I think tonight was a real coming out party for her, man. Um, and to be honest with you, when I think about it, we should have... She should have been up for, for a performance. You know what? I'm going to give her some money. Thank you. Thank right. you for bringing her up. Yeah, of course. But we're going to pay her some more money, too. Remind me of that, because you know I'll forget. <laughs> All right. The last thing for me, Dana. Uh, we know that you're going back to Fight Island in October now. Is it just going to be for the one event, or are you going to do multiple while you're over there? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that, it's going to be, you know, I've been talking about how, how I can't wait to share with you guys all the stuff we're doing. I just haven't gone there yet. I, I, got, I got to get back to Abu Dhabi and, and, and uh, have some meetings and get everything finalized out there. Abu Dhabi is going to be a very big UFC for the next however many years. Thanks, Dana. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Dana, were there any decisions or stoppages that you disagreed with tonight? Your mic's worse than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I better get closer. Any any stoppages or decisions that you hey, disagree with? Now we got a plane. All right. I know. Perfect. This is fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what are we on the runway here? Should I go a third time? Uh, back to the apex. Back to the apex. Back to the apex. <laughs> Any stoppages or decisions that you disagreed with tonight? Any what? Sto or decisions. Or decisions. I disagreed with? No, no. No, I, I listen, like I said, uh, the could have been stopped around earlier. I mean, that guy took some serious punishment. We sent him right to the hospital. No, no stopping, no talking, no nothing. Right to the hospital. Gotcha. Which fighter or fighters impressed you most tonight? Which one? Did Which fighters impressed you the most? Impressed me the most? I mean, it, it was a great card. A, a lot of kids look really good tonight. Um, but the Irene Aldana fight, I thought Irene looked awesome. I thought O'Malley, you know, taking on a zombie that wouldn't stop coming forward at him, no matter how We all know O'Malley hits like a truck. That kid has, has one punch knockout power. And he hit this kid with everything he had, kicks, punches. <laughs> Um, you name it, and uh, he couldn't stop him. And uh, I thought he held, held his composure really well. I'm obviously tied to Avala. I mean, I could go on yeah. and on, except for the co-main event. Yeah, absolutely. And last for me is um, is the fact that Irene Aldana missed weight, something that could go against her as far as you getting her another fight with a uh, higher-ranked contender. Is that a factor, or does can you forgive that and uh, <clears throat> let her let her go on to bigger and better? My mic must be really bad. Uh, I'm on top of shit. I didn't know she missed weight. Uh-oh. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, that's that's something we need to talk about. I didn't even know that. Understood. Thank to, you. To be hey, Dane. Yeah. Dana yeah. right here? Yeah. Right over here on your right, Dana? Yeah. Um, this is the, your big night back in Las Vegas, not at the Apex. You filled up T-Mobile. Was it what you expected? I'm assuming you've thought about it quite a lot. Yeah, I mean, the buzz and the energy here was, was awesome. Yeah, it was a good show. The, um, you know, you, you don't ever want to see a main event end like that, but it happens. It's a contact sport. You talked a lot about, you know, on the broadcast, the most celebrities who have requested tickets. I'm assuming you have a lot of celebrity friends. What's your nice way of telling them, I don't got any more tickets? Um, you know, th this was the one that we had to do it to a lot of people. We had to tell them we don't have any more tickets. Uh, it, you know, this thing sold out so fast and filled up so fast. Um, for instance, I mean, I was just telling somebody the other day, you guys know who Coach Brent Venables is, the defensive coordinator for um, uh, Clemson. The night we were in Abu Dhabi and Poirier won the fight, he texted me that night for tickets for the rematch. So <laughs> that's how early we were getting ticket requests. So, yeah, and celebrities are used to calling last minute, and nobody got any last minute tickets. To talk about, um, you know, in boxing, obviously the Tyson Fury fight got canceled due to COVID. You had a big, you, you obviously are now not competing with them, with San Hagen and Dillashaw. Just what are your thoughts on that? Obviously that might have hurt a bit of the ratings a little bit for UFC. No, I, I don't think about that at all. I, listen, I used to 15 years ago. I don't, I don't worry about that anymore at all. 
because it never has happened. And one of the things that we we've learned over the you know last however many years is <clears throat> when you have two fight same night, as long as you're not really stomping all over each other, you actually do pull a better number because as as fight fans we're a bunch of sickos and we will figure out a way to watch both of them at the same time. I've done it a million times, you know, even recently when we've had some boxing events uh, going on at the same time. I mean, even at the Apex, we'll have one in my room in the back, whatever the, the, you know, whatever the boxing fight is, or I'll have them put it at my table. So fans do the same thing. I actually think it helps, helps everybody when we do it. Thank you. Yep. Hey, Dana, down to your left over here, Dana. Yep. Um, obviously, you know, we all saw what happened, but any other details? Like, do we know it was the ankle, the lower leg? Do we know exactly what it was? I, it looked like the ankle to me, but I'm yeah. no doctor. The, you know, once they get in and do the x-rays on them and, and, and look at it, you know, they'll know exactly what's wrong. I mean, we'll, we'll probably know. You know? What? Lower tibia of the shin, I guess. Wow. I should have just texted uh, Hunter, I guess. I'm just kidding. I don't know how the fuck uh. they figured that out that quick, but... <laughs> Did you, did you get a chance to speak with Connor or anyone from his team before? No, they, I, only in the octagon I saw him. Okay. Thanks, Dana. All right, Dana. Go ahead. Oh no, behind you. Uh, he he was like next five guys ago. Yeah, you. Hey, thanks, Dana. I was just wondering. You talked about and you kind of mentioned the celebrities and so forth. But what did Donald Trump say? What did you say to Trump? <laughs> there was quite a there was a chant. Go, you know, USA, USA. It was you know. No, he, he, he uh, I, I met him outside and, and, and walked in with him and nothing, just he's a fight fan here to see the fights tonight. That's it. You know, I've been friends with this guy for years and, and uh, just two friends who are fight fans watching a fight. Dana, how come the things, the bonuses were 75 grand tonight? What was the decision behind that? Uh, you know, I was in there giving the fighter meeting. It's a big fight. I was getting all fired up and... I just said, F same way. Yeah. Just like being at the table is just getting carried away. Yeah, we 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 get a little fired up in the in the fighter meeting sometimes. And uh, is there any, any chance you could just make them seventy five grand going forward? Um, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, you know, seriously, fuck up our budget. We're all like, uh, kind of to your center, like right. Hi, right hi. Hey. Yeah. How are you? So good things. So Conor McGregor is probably the most successful athlete in terms of being a brand in UFC. You've got Dustin who has the hot sauce and he's making some headway with that. What are the conversations like that you have with fighters about taking advantage of their moment and and really being able to capitalize on their brand, not just as a fighter? It's so hard to do because, you know, you're dealing with grown men and women and um, you can't tell people how to spend their money. You can't tell people, you know, the, the one thing that I always tell them is please pay your taxes. Please pay your taxes. That's the one thing that you don't want to screw up and get behind. And to be honest with you, I mean, well, probably one of the most successful brands too is Ronda Rousey. You know, I was just with her a, a few days ago over at the Apex. I mean, this girl owns more houses than, uh, I don't know, bought a house in, in Hawaii. And she's uh, she's starting a new business, and she's doing this, she's doing that. She's got a new TV show. Um, I think I think she has really done a great job of capitalizing on on you know the, all the money she's made, and is continuing to make tons of money outside the octagon. She retired, so um, but but you either got it or you don't, right? I mean, it, it's like you could take five different business owners. One is a great businessman and does everything right and blows blows you know the business out of the water. One's okay and the other two are terrible. You know, you you, you have to have it. If you have it, you do. If you don't, you don't. But you can't tell these kids how to spend their money. Dana. Yeah. Right here. Yep. Um, in the midst of the NBA Finals, and the Wimbledon Finals, and the Euro Finals, this event tonight was the global epicenter of sport. This organization has jumped leaps and bounds beyond mainstream. Tell me a little bit about what that means to you personally and how now you believe the UFC is viewed in regard to topic A is UFC over all of that around the planet. Thank you, sir, first of all. And, uh, you know, Eric, my, my, my uh, social media guy, came to me, I don't remember what time it was tonight, but he said we're trending number one in every country 
in the world right now. We're trending number one. So, you know, li little things like that. And I, I, I always knew that, that this would, and I'm, I'm so crazy driven to, to make it that, to make it the biggest sport in the world. And I feel like over the last year and a half, a lot of people have gotten soft and lazy and complacent, and I'll run right over all of them. That's the way that I look at it, and I look forward to it. Dana, over here on your right. All right, we're this way. Yep. So all week you were saying uh, most pre-buys ever, most pre-buys ever. Do you have that number in front of you right now, or do you have an estimate of that number? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I was all, uh, I was all about that, right before the ankle break. I, I, I didn't even. So I'm, I, I'm thinking that, I know that the eight, eight o'clock, we were over 1.2 million buys, just in the U.S. So, my assumption. I have to be careful with this stuff now because we're a public company, and I can't go out shooting my mouth off and, and have it be, you know, completely wrong. But I'm gonna say that we came in anywhere between uh, 1.7 million and 1.8 million. That's fantastic, Dana. Uh, obviously a huge week, a lot of obstacles in the way. What was the biggest challenge of setting up this fight week? Um, you know, th th this, was a, this was a typical fight week. The worst part of this, this, uh, this week was tickets. Tickets is the of this job. I hate it. I've been doing it for 20 years. And when people tell, ask me, you know, when you retire, what, what will you be excited about? I'll be excited about not doing tickets anymore. That's, that's about it. Every, every, other, um, every other aspect of this job I love or tickets suck. It's the worst part of this job. It's so, like a wedding every weekend. I'm doing a wedding and seating people and nobody's happy with where they're sitting. And, this guy's in front of me and that guy's behind me and you know you know how that goes especially when you get celebrities and all that shit it just and, and fighters you know you gotta you see these guys I could, I could bitch all night to you about tickets Dana you said you had words with Connor in the cage uh, what were the words no I just looked at him I said how you do you okay you okay you know and he, and he just gave me the nod like but as soon as he's better you see a rematch happening between him and Poirier I don't know Listen, the rematch is there. You got the rematch with him like you got the rematch with Diaz. You know, it, it, it's, it's always going to be there. I don't know what the landscape's going to look like when he's ready or how long it's going to be. And um, so, so, so to say definitively, I, I can't right here right now. But you always have that rematch. Usually uh, f people talk about the fighters' entrances, but Taito of Voss's exit was maybe one of the best exits ever. Would, uh, would you share a shoey with, uh, with Ty? Uh, if the world was on fire <laughs> and everybody was dying of thirst, that's the last fucking thing I would ever do. <laughs> ever. But good for him. <laughs> Not my thing. And uh, we're finally back. Vegas is open. It's alive. T-Mobile. Do you have any dates, uh, more dates here in Vegas for T-Mobile? We do. I, I, don't, I don't know it off the top of my head, but we will be back to Vegas, yes. Dude. Yep. Right. You, you mentioned the, the pay-per-view buys. Before, you were talking a lot about uh, efforts to crack down on online piracy and stuff. Where do you feel like you are with that right now? Yeah, we, I, I got a text tonight that there was something like... Uh, there were tons of sites out there doing it, but we, we have a whole system in place that, you know, we're, we're so good at that. We're so good at that. We, 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 we battle that every day. We spend a lot of money um, to make sure that doesn't happen. The other thing, too, hats off to ESPN. Um, you know, no issues tonight whatsoever with anybody purchasing. You know, I was beating the drum all week to do pre-buy so you're not part of the you know, two million people that are trying to jump on at the same time and do it. And I, I'm, I don't know if you guys, I haven't heard one word all night about anybody having trouble buying the fight. So they did a great job. When it seems like you guys make so much money from ESPN directly now and from increasingly international rights fees and stuff, and that pay-per-view gets to be a smaller chunk of the business. Oh, no, no. The pay-per-view, pay-per-view is, is, is where we live or die. Pay-per-view is our, is our business.
Do you, you see that as like five, ten years from now, you think that stays the same way? Because it seems like you're trending more and more in rights fees. It's going to be interesting to see how that how that plays out, because in my opinion, over the next ten years, um, the networks and all this stuff are going to go away. Everything's going to be streaming. Everything's going to be streaming and it's going to be global. And I think that like ABC, CBS, and NBC that we grew up with as, as the powerhouses in television, there will be three of those. Will it be uh, Netflix, ESPN, and YouTube? I don't know. It'll be somebody, you know, there'll be three powerful people out there and, and they'll start locking up sports rights or whatever's going to do. I think the landscape is going to change so much in the next 10 years. I don't know. Lastly, what do you think about Greg Hardy at this point? Because he's gotten some good placement, and you guys have had a good push behind him, but he hasn't beat a lot of guys who are yep. like notable still UFC guys. Well, tonight was a big night for him. Tonight was a really big night. Tai Tuovasa would have been a, a real win for him. So, yeah, I don't know what this means for him tonight. but Dana, back over here on your right. Yep. So both Connor and Dustin this week, they mentioned that they want to challenge Charles Oliveira for the lightweight title at the end of the year at Allegiant Stadium down the street. Uh, but since T-Mobile is the exclusive home for the UFC events in Las Vegas, is Allegiant Stadium even a possibility for that fight? No. 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 Is my mic working? No. <laughs> Not a possibility. No. You know, you know what kind of a fight you have to go have to go into, you know, a stadium? You gotta have, you gotta be in a place, like for instance, you know what we do a stadium when Australia opens back up and we can go back over there and put on a, you know, you, you do an Adesanya versus Whitaker in Australia uh, or, or uh, New Zealand or something like that. Those are stadium shows, you know. Um, the other thing, I, I don't love stadium shows here in the United States and, and other places like in, <coughs> in, in Australia, they're used to stadiums. <coughs> I think it takes away from the experience. When you watch a fight, in an arena like tonight, it has a tighter feel. It has, a, it has this energy and this buzz inside of it. You can see the fight really well no matter where you're sitting. And I don't like taking away that, that in-house experience. So there's no possibility even if a big a fight Anything's possible. Itself? Allegiant okay. Stadium, the end of this year with Oliveira and Poirier? No, that's not possible. Okay. So um, last one for me. There was also a lot of confusion amongst fans about the booking of Cyril Gaon versus Derek Lewis in Houston. Did the multi-event who's confused? Fans. No. Oh. <laughs> Did the multi-event partnership that the UFC signed with the Toyota Center increase the urgency to have Derek Lewis booked for a title fight in Houston next month? No. Uh, it, it was almost simultaneous when, when we did the deal. I, so, I'm friends. It's a, he's a Fertitta. Okay, so no relation to that at all. No, he's a Fertitta. He and I. Last time we got together, first of all, when when. Um, when, uh, you know, the, the pandemic was, we were coming out of the end of the pandemic here. He hit me up and said, Texas needs you. We need you out here really badly. Can you come to Houston? I said, and then I, I think you guys remember this. I said, fuck, I'll go this weekend. It was like the Stipe fight, the Stipe uh, DC fight. I was going to bring it there that weekend. Some shit went on internally. We couldn't get, get it done. We go out there. We kill it in Houston. And he's like, that, that night after the fight, I met with him. And he's like, I want you to come back more and, and, and more often, so let's talk about it. We started talking, and, and, and we were going to go back to Houston. But there, there's no – one thing that, that I, I never do is uh, never put any pressure on ourselves that we have to go somewhere or whatever. We did the deal because we're friends, and we like each other, and we do really good business together. And I like Houston, too. So that's why. All right. Thanks, Dana. Yep. Are we going to London in September? We what? Are we going to London in September? We're supposed to. I think so. I'm, I got to go to London here soon. Uh, they got me doing something over there. I'll, I'll be going there soon, and we're trying, yeah, we're trying to go there before the end of the year. Is there a concern? Because there's still a travel ban at the moment. Yeah, I know. I, it, listen, I, I don't know how any of this stuff's going to play out. It's, it's, we'll see how this, this, you know, winter's coming. In, when we start going to the uh, fall and then winter and Delta, and I don't know. Is there, we'll any, see. is there any concern that we might start going back and all that stuff, lockdowns and stuff like that? Other people will go back. I'm not going back. Uh, you know what I'm going to do. I got. I'm good. No matter what happens, I'm moving forward. I'm, I'm doing my thing. Um, do I think other other sports will possibly shut down? Yeah, I think I think they probably will again. And uh, you know, but we won't. So you guys will all still be traveling.
unless your bosses don't let you. That's it. Thanks, for everybody. Have a great night. So. Gilbert, uh, congratulations on the victory. Uh, I know you're always seeking a finish and surely would have preferred that tonight, but talk to me about how you're feeling uh, after that win. I feel good. I feel special. You know, I, I just lost a title shot, and then you got to go back and beat a freaking guy that, that is very dangerous. Uh, the game plan will stay disciplined, hands up, take him down, smash him, make sure I control him when I take him down. Don't hunt to the submission on the first round like I did with Woodley and end up losing. So stay on top, control him, smash him. That was a little bit of the game plan, but uh, for sure, I always want to finish. I felt bad that I didn't have a finish, but I beat a guy that a lot of guys lost. A lot of guys that, a, a guy that a lot of guys doesn't want to fight. Yeah, I, I feel great, I feel special. Can you talk about how challenging it was? I mean, you talk about like bringing in Raymond Daniels and getting a feel for that, but he is one of the most unique guys in the division. So, you know, you think you're ready. You think you know what to expect. How different was it when you got in there? Uh, I got ready with Raymond Dennis, three guys. Raymond Dennis, my guy that was here with me, Jason Jackson, a beast, number three on the Bellator, was, he was the one doing the, the cage defense, the fed takedown, and he gave me a, such a hard work that I, I felt ready. No, Raymond Dennis, Jason Jackson, Lee and Manis, all my guys at San for. I felt great. I felt ready for sure. It's still tricky a little bit. He hit me with a freaking spinning kick on my neck. My neck is sore right now, but besides that, I'm healthy, I'm good, and I'm, I'm happy with that win. Crowd obviously voiced their displeasure a little bit at some point. I mean, you're hearing that in your mind, but you know you've got to stay in this position to win the fight. Is that difficult to stay disciplined? I mean, what's going through your head as you're, as you're hearing the crowd? I just lost my fight for the title because I wasn't disciplined. It, was as, it wasn't as hard to stay disciplined. I want to win. I want to become a champion. And they give me such a tough guy to fight. A guy that Leon say no, Kobe say no, say hey, give me this guy, I don't care. And uh, I, I got to stay disciplined. That was my whole training session. Every day of my preparation, at least to my coach, I want you disciplined. Bef before we start sparring, I want you disciplined. I want the hands up. I want you lighting your feet, moving. When you go, you go. If you're not feeling like it, keep moving, keep the hands up, stay active. And, uh, and yeah, it, it paid off. Like I said, it's a big win over a tough guy. You had a handful of names ready. I think they all make sense because they're all right there with you. But are any of those matchups more preferable to you than others? Not really. I just took the NMF belt. I can take the BMF belt. If Leon won, he can get it. If Nate won, he can get it. Uh, I know I just got a title shot. I cannot, I, I, I mean, I can't. I can't ask for another title shot. I don't believe they're going to give it to me. So I want to keep working. I want to keep staying disciplined keep getting better I still I need to find that balance to stay disciplined but on the same time get a finish I'm just gonna keep working give me any one of these guys uh, only thing I like Masvidal fight a lot but he just got two losses and uh, he make a lot of money so he gotta give me an extra check to fight him and fight him but I fight Masvidal next but put me on a pay-per-view card I'll, I'll fight him and it's gonna be a crazy one go to your left Wayne, what was the secret to getting uh, Steven down so many times? I mean, I don't remember him being taken down that often. He never fought me, but the secret was Jason Jackson, Bellator number three on the world. That guy was, he was the guy. Two guys, like I said, Raymond Daniels gave me the decency and Jason defended the takedown. They, they make me ready. A lot of variations, a lot of things. They got very strong. My guys from, from IAGP, my strength conditioning coach, they, they let me very, very strong. And all the preparation for the Kamara fight, I think uh, I learned so much, and and that got me ready. You know, I, I was I was getting ready to fight Kamara. It didn't wait the way it went, but I was very well prepared to clinch a lot, to scramble a lot. We keep growing on the preparation for sure. We change a lot of the styles, but I have that gorilla power right there. If as soon as I get a hold of him, and I was remembering the training, as soon as I get a, a, a body lock, I was just like, man. 
guy's not as strong as Jason. It felt so good, you know, when you expect the guy to be a freaking monster, and when you get a hold, oh, he's not that monster. That, that feels good. How well did he defend? Because when you did get him down, it didn't seem like you, he, you ever really threatened anything. I mean, he, the harder part was to get close. I, I need to be very aware to don't to get any counter shot, trying to get the angle, but he was very sneaky. But as soon as I got in, I, I felt great. I said, okay, it's a matter of time. Take that guy down. Let's make sure we get a good grip. We stay strong, stay busy. As soon as I get a good position, I went for and every, I, I think it was three times. The three times that I tried, I took him down. And, and two other questions for me. Number one, uh, how do you break down Colby against uh, Uzma? Now that they fought each other, what changes do you think each guy would make and, and who would you favor? My favorite is Kamaru. I, I mean, I never trained in Cole, but I trained a lot with Kamaru, the tough guy. He just beat me, just beat Majidal. We stay active, we stay training. Uh, Kobe broke his jaw. Like, uh, Kamaru break Kobe's jaw. I think Kamaru gets more power. You don't see, I think I never saw Kobe knocking everyone down or even knocking no one out. Kamaru does. Kamaru has a freaking gas tank to a good wrestling. Yeah, Kamaru's the favorite, I think. He, he, him all fights against Kobe, I think he won every single one. And then lastly for me, uh, you had talked about your discipline being important. Tactically, what do you think? Anything you have to change in the, in the rematch when you finally do get Kamaru? Yeah, a lot of things I got to change in my preparation. I did a lot of, a lot of mentally changed, a lot of things. I got very angry at that fight, very emotional, and that took me out of the, out of the fight. I got to stay disciplined, a little bit more technical mistakes that I made it. And I'm going to keep evolving. That, that's why I want to fight. And I, I do believe in one or more two fights to get another title shot. And I don't mind with that. I'm just going to keep getting better, keeping discipline, and putting a lot of tools on my game. I just show a lot of guys, Johnny Hendricks, uh, Tyron Woodley, a lot of guys couldn't take Wonder Boy down the way I did. And uh, yeah, still going to get better and uh, get, try to get a finish next time. But yeah, I'm going to keep getting better. Gilbert, to your right over here. Yeah. Uh, were the constant level changes in round two and three, was that a part of the game plan? Yeah, a lot A lot of that was, I got to make him guess, you know. So sometimes he got on the dishes and he was very effective coming forward. And then I like, okay. And then I listened to my coach, Daniel Kami Barzini. Hard change level. And then I changed and say, oh, okay, he don't like that. And then, yeah, after that, I, I started listening to my coach saying discipline. And that's what I did. And how much nicer is a win like this, you know, back in front of the crowd, being on one of these big cards, you know, having the family here again, is how much nicer is that? Yeah, we're super nice having the family here, my wife right there, Bruna, Pedro, Joshua, the whole family right here was amazing, you know, and then the, the, the for sure, the, 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 the arena, that energy, they were booing, I don't care, it was good, I felt that energy, and, uh, but the main thing was coming back from the loss, it's always good to get a win, especially Especially that was a big one, it was a title shot. I was about to become a champion, and then I lost. And like, man, it's over. No, it's not over. You know, okay, let's bounce back. Let's keep working. That I think that that made me a very uh, a successful night, a special night. Be able to bounce back. You know, like okay, we, with the dream still alive. Let's go. Did you get a chance to see the main event? And just what did you think about it? I saw a little bit. I was taking a shower, and then the kids started yelling, and then I'm like, oh, but. When I saw the kick, I think he kicked right, and then Poirier blocked. Uh, he stepped back on it. Yeah, oh. My wife said, oh, he broke his feet. And then we were looking. Unfortunately, you know, I think uh, it's a crazy sport. It's a tough sport. And uh, I saw what happened with Anderson Silva. I saw what happened with Chris Weidman not long ago. We saw what happened to Connor. So it's unfortunate. It's a very a hard sport. And... Uh, we got to appreciate these guys when they are out there putting the show. And uh, it's unfortunately, I was looking forward so much for this fight, but it is what it is, you know. I think I think Connor, you got to take for sure a little time off, heal up. But I wasn't watching, I don't know, I didn't know how the fight was going. But it's, it's an unfortunate situation. And do you think that he's kind of crossed the line a little bit with, you know, you mentioned your family right there, but. If somebody was doing that to you, is that too much? How he's been bringing in Poirier's wife and everything to the conversation? What he was doing? He's, he's been talking, you know, trash talk about family, Dustin's family and, you know, wife I, and everything. He tried to get on, on each, we tried to get on each other's mind, I think. 
for sure we cannot cross that line but at the end of the day we, we fight i'm trying to take the guy head off if you say something i think you for sure i i, I don't want to cross that line but in the same way we're gonna fight anyway so i i don't like to cross that line but if the guy do it's my job to don't let that affect me so i think it's a little i don't know but it's part of the game you over good. here to your far right Thank you. yep what well, you mentioned that when you had uh steven in the body lock he wasn't as strong as your training partners was there anything else that surprised you or was unexpected in the match with uh, wonder boy uh, the distance that, that he did was very he was long another thing that i like so much when he hit me a couple of times it wasn't as hard as i taught you because i tried to put a monster out there okay i'm looking at that guy when he hits, it's gonna be hard when they go to the cage it's gonna be hard and everything i put it hard if it's not as hard better but if it's hard i'm ready for uh and freaking raymond daniels was so quick hit me from a lot of different angles that it, it's kind of hard to say but raymond i think was a little quicker a little bit more freaking spinning from every angle and kicking me but he still a, a very tough opponent that I saw tonight. For sure. I know it doesn't matter to fighters if you're the underdog or the favorite, but you were the underdog, excuse me, in that fight. And a lot of people were saying, even though you have great training partners, it's not going to work against Wonder Boy. Uh, what did you think if you read these things or if people tell you these things? The thing is I don't read those things. And if I do read it, it doesn't affect me. I know exactly who I am. I know exactly the skill set that I possess. I've been finishing all these guys. I, I lost um, to Kamar Usman last time. Yeah, I did, but that's my only loss in that division. Besides that, I beat every single one in that division, and I'm going to keep doing that. So I, I, I don't pay attention to that. I, do, I know exactly who I am, know my capabilities. And uh, I cannot control what people are going to say. People are going to hate on that fight. People Now they're going to say, oh, that guy, that guy is old. Like, same thing with Damian Maia. I fought Damian Maia. Oh, Damian Maia is old. Okay, I fought Woodley. Oh, Woodley's old. Okay, and then I fought Wonder Boy. Now Wonder Boy is old. And then if I fought next guy, oh, that guy is everybody's old. So I'm just gonna keep on beating everybody. For sure. Last question for me, Gilbert. Last question over here, if I could. Yeah. Uh, how would you rate your performance one through ten? I think it was a nine and a half. I think it was a good one. The guy was very tough. I, I can name the guys that didn't take him down the way I did. Johnny Hendricks, uh, uh, high-level wrestling. I don't know how many times he's wrestling champion. Then Tyron Woodley, and then Jorge Masvidal just lost to him too. He beat my guy Vicente Luque. He's a, he's a tough one. And then I was able to dominate him. And uh, yeah, if, if for sure I'm a finisher. I want to beat every. I, I want to be the the crap out of the guy that that is in front of me. But sometimes I just sometimes got to go that way. Absolutely, great work. Thank you. Durinho, tudo bom? Que em português, por favor. Durinho, é, o quão importante foi para você ter participado do, da sua amizade com o Vicente Luque, a luta do Luque contra o Thompson? Eu sei que vocês têm uns estilos muito diferentes, mas que tipo de lição, que tipo de conselho você tirou dali? Então, eu vi muita coisa na luta do Vicente, eu estava no corner dele, estava lá, eu fazia os sparrings, eu mandava um vídeo para ele, ele, ele ia vir para a luta, mas acabou que fechou a luta dele, daí atrapalha muito se ele viesse, mas eu... É, a gente se falou direto, ele mandou mensagem antes da luta também. E uma hora, a hora que ele me deu o rodado, que me, que me deu uma balançada ali, eu perdi as pernas, porque eu lembrei muito do Vicente. Numa hora que o Vicente é, se machucou um pouquinho na luta, que a gente um golpe, ele ficou com a mão alta, mexendo bastante ali, ciscando, e o, e o Steven não vem. Eu lembrei muito disso, eu falei, putz, se ele me se quando a gente tomar um knockdown, vou ficar igual o Vicente ali com a mão alta, mexendo ali, dá umas fitas que ele para de vir se eu precisar de tempo para me recuperar. Então, isso foi uma das grandes coisas, de várias outras coisas que eu peguei daquela luta contra o Vicente. Eu te perguntar desse knockdown, foi de fato o um knockdown? Você chegou próximo ali? Qual foi a sensação? Ah, foi um rodado aqui atrás da nuca. Deu a perna um pouquinho ali, mas... Aí lembrei daqui, já tinha, já estava automático ali, se eu tomasse algum golpe, de dar uma fintada, de mexer bastante. Perdi a perna um pouquinho, mas recuperei muito rápido. Não, não chegou a ser um knockdown, que eu não caí, não fiquei mal ali. Eu só tive que apoiar a mão e voltar. Depois de algumas lutas durante a pandemia, todo esse processo sem público, voltar com o público e, e ser vaiado, como é que foi lidar com isso? Pareceu que você lidou numa boa ali, mas como é que foi, foi a situação? Foi irado, foi irado. Na real, quando acabou a luta, 
e eu vi a galera ali, pra mim eu tava no Brasil, daí eu, pô, a galera tá me... Ah, eu falei, pô, não tô no Brasil, não. E, mas a galera vai indo ali, a energia da galera foi irada, não tem problema não. Próximo passo, quando a gente pode ver o Durinho de volta e contra quem seria o ideal pra você? Acho que outubro ou novembro ali, é, qualquer um, falei três nomes lá, Ney Dias, o, o Mais Vidal, o, o Leon Edwards, aí são os três caras que, que me interessam. Pra finalizar então, The Last One, uh, se puder olhar pra essa câmera aqui, estou ao vivo aqui pro pessoal da g Fight, mandar um recado pro Brasil. Valeu galera do Brasil, muito obrigado, o, o sonho tá vivo, vamos pegar esse cinturão, obrigado pela torcida. Thank you guys. Dustin, congratulations uh, on the victory. I know it's kind of a, a weird ending, but obviously, uh, you know, a very exciting fight while it lasted. Uh, how satisfied are you as, you as you sit there right now with the performance tonight? You know, you never want to get a win that way, but the, um, what happened was a result of checking a kick. You know, I'm more than sure of it. And, you know, you, he, he got what he had coming to him, man. Karma's a mirror. And I busted my ass for so long to, to put myself in this position. I doubled down on myself after beating him in January when they offered me a title shot. You know, I doubled down on myself and it paid off. Nice. You were in there with him, obviously, just six months ago. So, you know, you're, you're familiar with him at this point. Um, how did that first round play out? Did anything surprise you? I mean, he did have a couple of decent moments in there. Did anything surprise you at all? Uh, when he jumped for a guillotine, that surprised me. Um, Nah, he hit me with a good left hand. I kind of was at an angle. I didn't see it. It was, it was like a downward left hand. The kid can punch, man. He, he really can. He hit me with a good left hand. I, I thought he was going to use calf kicks against me, and I was right. Uh, yeah, that, that's about it. Jump the gilly, your signature move there, right? Don't be silly. Jump the gilly. <laughs> It did look a, a little bit in there. I was trying to figure out. It looked like you were complaining a little bit to her, Dean. Oh, that's why I let him up. That's why I let him up at the end of the... Uh, Or, yeah, I don't know. But I let him up because he was, he had three fingers in my glove, you know, the, the cuff of the tape, so it's a good grip. And he's pulling me down into up kicks. He's pulling me down and kicking up at the same time. You know, I'm not, su I'm not surprised that he does that type of stuff, you know? Uh, so I was telling her, that, you know, this guy's, I can't, get, I can't get out of it. Did he acknowledge you at all? I got, that's why I couldn't tell what was being said. Did Herb acknowledge you at all? Or? When I told her, maybe Connor pulled his fingers out. I got to go back. You know, fighting's crazy. I got to go back and see. But I, that's what I was trying to tell Herb. Yeah. Uh, and then, obviously, you, there was a late sequence at the end of the opening round. I mean, you were pushing to the end. Um, when you went back to your corner at the end of round one, did you know something was wrong? It yeah, when I was walking away, uh, at, and he stayed down, I looked down at his shin, and I saw the bone. Like, I saw it was disfigured a little bit. And I was like, oh, man. It's just weird that it held together because I'm more than sure it happened on when I checked the kick that it held together and then, you know, probably when he pivoted on that bone, that's when it probably separated or something. You know, I, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Yeah. So as you walk back to your corner, did you go, the, the fight's over? Yeah. Yeah. I went to sit on the stool and uh, 
I forget who, who was it in my corner came up to me and said, this is over. Nice. You know, like you said, it's not the way you want a fight to end, right? But I do wonder, I mean, he said you were going to be leaving on a stretcher. He ends up leaving on a stretcher. I mean, that, do you take any satisfaction in that? Listen, I'll, Connor said some nasty stuff that didn't make it on Embedded. And, and maybe when this behind the scenes for this fight airs, you'll see him on the ground still saying some real, some real bad stuff. But even that stuff being said, I don't wish, you know, serious harm like that on nobody. The guy's got kids. Um, I want him to go home safe to his family. I pray uh, before these fights. Every time before I walk through the octagon door, I'm praying that not, not you know, not for me to win. Not, I, I'm praying that we both get out of this safe because, you know, I know what I'm going to try to do to him. I know what he's going to try to do to me, yeah. you know. He said afterwards the rivalry's not over. Dana White was here earlier. and Dana said, you know, obviously you're going to fight for the title next, but at some point you do the rematch down the line. Do you feel like the rivalry is over? Do you feel like... No, no we are going to fight again, whether it's in the octagon or on the sidewalk. You don't say the stuff he said, you know. It, the things that he did say, especially afterwards, you're saying about your wife and, and that sort of nah, thing. Nah, that's... My wife's solid as a rock. I'm not worried about that. That's noise. He was saying that he was going to kill me. You don't say stuff like that, that he was going to murder me. You don't say stuff like that, you know. You don't say stuff about people's wives either, but I know that that's, you know, I know that's, that's zero chance. Uh, but there is a chance, you know, somebody could die. And you don't say that. You don't wish that on anybody, man. Last thing for me, I mean, you're fighting for the world title next. I mean, I know it's going to be a big moment for you. Um, early, I'm sure you want, you want to go rest a little bit. I just want to know how much Chad Ochocinco lost tonight. Yeah, how, you bet on Connor. Okay, okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I figured he'd put more down than that as well. Uh, no, but I will ask, obviously you fight with the title next. Do you have an idea? I mean, do you have a date circuit on the calendar, an idea? I mean, uh, how, how soon you want to fight? I feel like I've been preparing for a fight since last year because I was getting ready for Connor in January. I fought him. As soon as the fight ended, I knew that was next. So I got home from uh, Abu Dhabi and started training for that fight. Um, I did a nine-week camp, but as soon as I got home from Abu Dhabi, I was, you know, I had one trip, I got to decompress a little bit, but I was getting ready to fight him again. You know, the, the last thing I wanna do right now is go home and, and sign a contract and start getting ready right away. We'll see, I just need to get home and think about some things and decompress and spend some time with my family. You know, my, I just found out my little brother's gonna be a dad. Uh, and I just wanna be, you know, be around, around him. Dustin, to your left. Um, congratulations on the victory. I know you, the win means a lot to you, but are you most proud of the fact that you maintained your dignity and you didn't kind of stoop to those kind of things? It would have been easy when the crowd was going crazy at the press conference and all throughout the week. You, you did not do that. Is that what makes you proud of you know, your performance this week? I'm proud of the performance, but I am proud at uh, maintaining the mindset through all the craziness, all the talk, all the noise that's surrounding me when coming into these fights. You know, And it doesn't start just here on fight week. It starts... Uh, months away on social media you know in the last month i got off of social media and just let my agency post and they would they would send me a picture i would tell them a caption they would do it all and i wouldn't have to get on because it's just so much negativity and so much toxicity on that man i don't need that around me dude i'm trying to be a light i'm trying to help people look these my goal is to provide for my family and with these same hands that i beat these guys down with lift my city up lift people in need up and and you know just be a beacon of light to, to, and a voice for people whose voice isn't, isn't heard. And, you know, I feel like I'm doing that, and uh, I'm happy. How much do you think beating him twice will help your charitable efforts? Because now you're a much more notable fighter than you were, say, in December of last year, having beaten Conor McGregor twice. Do you, do you think about that and think it'll make more of an impact for other people because of these two wins? Yeah, anytime you beat a guy like that on a stage like this, you know, I don't know, this was a big fight. A lot of eyes were on this, and um, I got to talk about the good fight a little bit in the post in the post fight interview. But not only in the post fight interview, um, my career, my star gets bigger. More people are, are googling, and, and I'm reaching more, you know, more people. And with that, we can set bigger goals and, and just keep the good fight going. I have I have very big plans. We're going back uh, to Uganda to build housing on land we bought. Um, with the overflow money after we built the water wells during the Khabib fight. Me, Manny Pacquiao, Justin Wren are all coming together with our nonprofits and we're going there. We're gonna build on 40 acres and I'm just excited and, and proud and happy to be in a spot like that, to be able to, to recognize the position I'm in. And I'm, I, I do, I want to keep growing and these kind of fights do that.
You referenced the guillotine bef uh, attempt that he had before. You know, he put that quote out where he talked about, you know, I don't recognize losses by submission, you know, only chaos. So, <laughs> you know, when you look at it after the fight and you go, he tried twice on you on a guillotine, like, what does that say? The fact that he's dogging submissions and yet there he is trying to submit you twice. That just shows you, man, that it's all noise, you know? I feel like all the craziness he was doing, he has to do that for himself uh, to hype himself up. Honestly, man, I just, I'm good. I don't even like this shit anymore, dude. I, uh, I just scrap because I'm good at it and I enjoy the fight. But all this other stuff, all the talk, all, you know, I just, just come here to, to get in the fight. Last question for me, and I know, you know, you said you don't want to talk about an Oliveira fight, but is it going to be difficult in your mind? Like, you know, McGregor was such a big obstacle to overcome the last time because he had beaten you the first time, this time to prove it wasn't a fluke. Now you get to Oliveira, and he's just a dude in the division, right, you know, that happens to have the belt. It, mentally, will that be a hurdle, and will that be a little bit of a challenge during camp to get yourself back to that same place? No, he's not just a guy in the division who happens to have the belt. He's a guy who's picked himself up, up off the canvas, Time and time again, you know, uh, fought through adversity, through two weight classes, been in the UFC a decade. He's not just a guy with a belt, you know, he's earned earned every ounce of gold he, he has around his waist, and I have nothing but respect for guys like that. Uh, I don't know him personally, but his 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 work history, you know, I, I can't uh, hate on anything he's done. The guy, you know, it's incredible. That's tougher to do than, I think, um, you know, to go undefeated, you know, because you, you never learn things about yourself. You learn so much about those, about things about, you, about yourself and those losses and of uh, climbing back up to the top and getting motivated again. You know, that's when you find out you're a real fighter. Not, I'm not saying that these undefeated guys aren't, but I'm just saying I have respect for somebody like that who's climbed back up and won a world championship. Hey, Dustin, down here to your left. Uh, congratulations on, on the win. Uh, trilogies in combat sports, there's always a sense of like closure and finality for tri trilogies. Do you feel that coming off of this win? Closure? It sucks, man, because I, you know, I was going to beat the guy if his, if his leg would have held up. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure yet. I, I need to digest it all, you know, because right now it kind of feels weird that I just, I have a lot of fights and I've never, there's always been a definite end to, to my, well, besides the uh, first Eddie, Eddie Alvarez fight was kind of gray area, but it's not a good feeling, you know. I won, and I feel like his, what happened was because something I did, but it's, just, it's not like I went out there and submitted him or put him away. Uh, there's going to be so many voices and so many opinions saying, oh, you didn't win. You know, I know that. I know the MMA fans. I know the MMA game. And, but I'm going back home to my family, and you guys here can check my record tomorrow, and it's a win. Um. I want to get your reaction on, on, on you know, some of the, I guess, the mixed reaction from the crowd tonight when you came out, you know, after the finish. You know, you're a guy who tries really hard to do everything right. You have a charity. You're a family man. And, you know, they're, they're cheering someone like Connor, uh, you know, over you. Even with all the things that he said, you know, some things that, like you said, were, were maybe crossed the line. I mean, the, the fans' reaction, how does, that, how does that make you feel? Man, fans, you know, I appreciate them. I appreciate them filling up the seats, and uh, they're going to root for who they're going to root for. Um, like I said, it's noise. You know, I don't, I don't really overthink that stuff anymore. It's just noise. Thank you for buying the ticket. Dustin, over here on your right. First of all, congratulations on getting the win. Um, in the post-fight press conference in the cage, you referenced you brought somebody out to the, to the fight tonight. Uh, can you elaborate on that? Tell us a story about that. Yeah, we did a fundraiser back home uh, right before I left to start training camp for a, a young man named Peyton Murphy. And uh, we flew his, him and his mom and dad out here. He's battling a, a, a bone cancer. And the cancer had went into remission, and then it's, it came back. So, uh, you know, he's a real fighter. Guys like that, that's who I want to lift up. And, and it's inspiring to me to see this guy, you know, going about his everyday life still you know, loving life and living life and, and, and never giving up hope, you know, uh, that's, a, that's a real fighter. So, yeah, we, we flew his family out and we, we did a fundraiser and raised some money for them uh, back home in Louisiana. That's good stuff. Um, all week you did a pretty good job of not getting into the trash talk too much. You kind of took the high road all week. But in the post fight press conference, it seemed like he kind of dug into that a little bit. Did he say something to you afterwards in the cage that triggered that? And if so, what was it? Yeah, he was saying... Uh, 
he was putting dude you i hope they show the behind the scenes stuff man he was like still sitting on the ground still saying i'm gonna kill you he was putting his hand to his head like a gun like bro chill out chill out uh he was saying that all right thanks dustin dustin, dustin right here in the front uh dustin a lot of the times when you have a champion leave you know the next guy coming in there's like well you're great but you didn't beat the man to become the man You've now had two fantastic performances against Conor McGregor. Charles is on a great win streak. Can you talk about just how you guys, you know, this is a new era in the lightweight division and both you and Charles, even though you have, you're not gonna get that Habib fight again, you guys are now running the show at 155. That's anything, man. That's uh, not only sports, business, everything. You know, the next generation comes up, there's new contenders, there's new hungry guys who's, putting in work and, and the game's not only that, the game's always evolving. So you have these young kids now who have been training mixed martial arts since they were 12 years old, you know, and now they're 18 and start fighting. And, and it, it's just a, a different uh, landscape for mixed martial arts because it's such a new sport. Fans talk about, you know, rivalry and, you know, the, the media gets into it. A lot of storylines get into it. When you think of Connor, you know, take yourself out of it in the competition. Do you see it like this is a rival or is this just you know what this is a guy I just happened to be scheduled to compete against like how do you see him you know in the story of your career <clears throat> yeah he I'm, I'm trying my best to, to not take it personal but like I'm saying man I, I know I'm trying I'm making it seem like a, a big deal talking about this over and over again but you don't say that type of shit to people you don't say you're gonna kill somebody you know that I don't take that lightly man uh, I don't know. I don't know. Thank you. Justin, right here. Uh, you know, you mentioned that you don't really, you know, like fighting too much anymore necessarily, but... I like fighting. I don't like the, uh, the process. I don't like right. the sheep fans and the crazy clickbait media. Fair enough. You know, <laughs> every, it's turned into a fashion show, you know? I like the real stuff, and that's fighting. That's the only real part about this whole thing. All right. So, I mean, if you were to go back in time, though, like, if you never got into fighting, what do you think you would have ended up doing? I don't know. I don't know. I was getting in a lot of trouble before fighting, man. I'm not sure. I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did for sure. It is it fun for you to kind of see all the celebrities at a big event like this? Yeah, it was cool, man. Steve-O came backstage, uh, David Spade, uh, a, a bunch of people. It's, it's awesome. Tonight was uh, packed. You know, Trump was right there when I turned around. It's crazy. The Rat King make it out, Theo? Theo's here, yeah. Right. Theo is here for sure. <laughs> hey, Dustin. Dustin, congrats on the victory. Right over here. Let's say you beat Oliveira and you become the lightweight champion. In your eyes, does Conor McGregor need to win a fight to get a title shot against you? Bro, Conor McGregor is one and, and three or one and four in, in the lightweight division. Yeah, he has to win some fights. But like I said before, a guy like that goes out there and starts at somebody, he's right back in the top uh, contender talk, you know, just because of his star power. But Dustin? Dustin, over here. The guy with real questions at the press conference. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, all stories have heroes and villains, the good guys and the bad guys. You work with kids. You inspire, you motivate, you change lives. What's the message you can give to these kids about how people are cheering the bad guy and booing the good guy in a setting like this where they can understand how life really works sometimes? He is a magnificent personality we get that but the work that you do obviously the kids have to be confused why are they booing the bad guy what what do you tell them and how does that affect you personally I don't know I don't think about it that deep uh, but that's just the world we live in you know that's just the world these kids are gonna grow up in um, I, I don't know how to answer that question does it does it you know when he is being cheered, and they're, listen, this crowd is chanting USA for every other American fighter other than you. Doesn't affect you in any capacity? I, I definitely would rather them be cheering for me, but uh, like I'm pretty solid mentally now. I just don't care about that stuff. It doesn't really bother me, you know, because they can't, they can't get in there and fight for him. Dustin, over here to your far right. So one of the things you were kind of hinting at was all the noise he was making, all the trash he was talking. 
a lot of people were thinking both of you guys were equally as confident going into this fight, but I wonder if you kind of feel that maybe he wasn't that confident going into this fight. Yeah, he's. I think he was overcompensating for that mental space where he's asking himself at night, you know, am I still that guy? Yeah. Um, and maybe he performs better when he's in that character, in that mode. You know, everybody has their own thing. I, I, I don't know. Would it make you feel any better or worse knowing it was all kind of a put on to try to get into your head because he didn't feel he had much of a chance? Not. Nah, you know, I don't hate the guy, but you just don't say stuff to, like that. Yeah, you know, absolutely. you don't say stuff like that. Last question. Great his speed. He has a lot of great attribu attributes. Um, his ability to thrive under pressure and, and cameras and lights is, is, you know, amazing as well. Uh, but he's just a human being, like I was saying at the press conference. You know, he bleeds just like me. Absolutely. Congratulations. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Would you mind to talk a little bit more about Oliveira? How do you see you can beat him? How do you see him as your next opponent? I gotta. I haven't started getting with my coaches and breaking down footage and doing all that. You know everything that comes along with preparing for an opponent. But I'll probably just calf kick him. Probably. <laughs> when and where do you want to fight him? We'll see. I need to go home and decompress. Uh, I don't know the schedule for the UFC. What they're planning on doing at the end of the year. I know somebody earlier told me Charles wanted to fight me in December. So we'll see. You know that's a. We'll figure everything out. I just want to get home to my family. Dustin, question for you. Your mental focus was outstanding. You never played the McGregor games. I know that was a focus. You didn't focus on the title either. You focused on Connor. Looking but, at Charles now, will that be an issue? Thinking about Connor, or will the no. entire focus be on the title? No, because like I, I know f for certain, the title fight wasn't even going to be an option, you know, until tonight happened. So there's no reason to drain energy on 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 that plan. When I have a uh, plan A right here, I can't look at plan B or the next step because uh, all I have is the moment, you know. Dustin, I think after the, the last event, a lot of us felt that the story between you two, everybody liked the interaction. But now after seeing what happened in this fight week, where, where do you think that it, the hate from Connor stems from? Like we were t just talking, maybe he has to build himself up to be that guy. To, and and he, he performs better that way. He believes the stuff he's saying, and he he's, turns into that character. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he's a bad person. I don't know. And then a couple other lighthearted ones. Um, I'd love you to give you one more chance to plug the stuff that you're doing with Justin Wren and Pacquiao, a little update on um, where you guys stand with that and, and the work that you guys are doing. I have to get with my wife and uh, see the donations that come in through the website. And then, obviously, every fight I auction off my fight kit, so 100% of those... Uh, proceeds from the auction of my fight kit of what I wore tonight is going to go to that goal and I'm not sure exactly where we're at with that but I'm, I'm I, uh, I would guess we're going in the right direction and lastly I'm not sure if you saw it in the, while you were in the back um, when uh, Tui Vasa was coming out and leaving the cage he was doing some shoeys I don't know if you saw somebody poured him a shoey but actually put your hot sauce in there as yeah. well I don't know if you actually saw he wasn't the biggest fan but I don't think he was blaming on the fact of your sauce it was just the fact that somebody actually put hot sauce in with beer. He said it was a no. From a shoe? In a shoe. Don't blame it on the sauce. Blame it on the feet. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fair enough. Congrats. Just real quick to you, right? Final two questions. You mentioned how you don't get, you don't care about the stuff around the fight so much anymore, and you don't get dragged into the negativity. And we could see you kind of in the pre-fight press conference. It seemed like you were just willing yourself not to get pulled into his stuff. How did you get to that point? What, what was the process like to go from you know being pulled into some of that stuff to getting to this point where you're not as bothered by it? I, you know, um, it's just been a long process of, of years of making mistakes from being too committed and caring too much about everything, you know, and things that I can't control. I, I'm not sure, it's just evolution of, of myself, not only as a fighter, but as a, as a husband and, and, a, and a father. Um, I, I don't know. I, I just, I know who I am. So people can't tell me who I am. You can't sit here at a press conference and tell me 
who I am, you know? Come on. Lastly, uh, people wondered, I think, after the last one being in Abu Dhabi in a different environment, and how some of these fights with the, without crowds have been like a real different feel, and then you come here and it's the exact opposite of that, a packed arena and a really high energy, high emotion kind of environment. What's, for you, what's the difference between those? How, how does it translate to a different fighting experience? I, like when I fought at the Apex last year, that was one of the best uh, fighting experiences I had. It was quiet, peaceful, fighting's chaotic. When I'm in the locker room warming up, you know, I have these, the ang I have anxiety and nerves. I'm about to go in front of the world. You know, millions of people are watching. My city back home is, is watching and rooting for me. I don't want to let anyone down. I don't want to let myself down. I want to perform in my ability. Uh, at the top of my, you know, whatever I'm capable of doing, I want to perform at that. And, um, yeah, that, that, like, I'm just, over time, I've got acquainted with those feelings. So when I'm in the locker room warming up, I'm like, here we go again, you know. Uh, and I've learned that those feelings are what keep you alive, what keep you able to, to react in the moment at a higher speed and, and be on, you know, be on your game. But I liked fighting in the Apex when it was quiet. Dustin, I know you've uh, you've been you've been up here a while, so I'm gonna let you out, get out of here. But you've been asked a bunch about you tuning everything out, you tuning Connor out, not paying attention to it. But what about like, do you have to have a conversation with the family and people around you to say, hey, listen, a lot of stuff's gonna come out, like just ignore it, don't pay attention to it, because other people might have a more difficult time. Yeah, with well, my wife yesterday. Thug, yeah, thug, yeah. Thug, thug wife, by the way. That's the new nickname. <laughs> Yeah, my husband, or am I her wife? No, uh, my coach, yes, I think, said thug wife for the picture of her flipping off Connor in the game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that's what I mean, though, about, like, other people around you don't. Well, she was getting worked up, just like the stuff with the charity. I, but I've been in the spotlight a long time, been fighting UFC, had great performances, mostly. A few, a few ones that didn't go my way. And I just know, like, the, the fire that comes down with, with that stuff. Um, so I'm more, you know, equipped to handle all the hate. You know, she, she, she's not. So when the charity stuff started happening with Connor and a lot of hate was being thrown, she felt it because she, you know, does so much for the charity. So it kind of started bringing her down. And then with Connor doing this other stuff he just did, like, it was working her up more than it was me, you know. So, yeah. Sorry, how much, how much more difficult is it, like, when you don't have, like, you have to see your family going through it, and you have to watch them because you are able to tune it out. You said hey, it was cool, you're, you're chill, but then when you have to, it has to hurt you to have other people. Yeah, hurt. yeah, hurt. yeah. Uh, I don't like to see that, man, but I guess that's just, I don't know, I guess that's just where I'm at in, in, in my career, uh, in the sport, but, you know, I don't want anybody around me to, to have to go through stuff like that, but that, man, that's, it's whatever, man. So, it's social media stuff, you know? That shit's not real. Will there still be sauce tomorrow? Will it be sold out? <laughs> we'll have to see. We're about to launch. This is the original. This is the OG. We're about to launch the uh, KO edition uh, on the 15th. So people wanted a hotter sauce, and we, we definitely brought a hotter sauce with ghost pepper. So. Can you eat it? Can you eat the hot one? Oh, yeah. 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 Thank you guys so much.